<laughs> Gary's been pestering me a bit to tell him how to answer physics questions in exams and this is really key examination technique so well Gary if you're going to ask the question at least turn around and listen to me. Um, well first of all there's two types of question there's the written question and calculation question in physics and they're completely different so tackle them in very different ways. Step one Always read carefully the question. This is for the written questions first. Step one, always read carefully. And I suggest you underline all the things you're asked to do. And that's so we, you're not going to miss any out. So look for the command words. What are you actually being told to do by the examiner in this question? Step two, think about the branch of physics that you're having to apply. Think about that unit. If it's a unit three paper, there's only going to be certain principles they're actually going to be testing you on. So think which part of the syllabus is this question about? As soon as you've done that, you, all you need to do is apply that knowledge, the stuff you rev have revised, to that question. Step three, plan it. Are there any diagrams? Do you think this, this um, would be best answered with a diagram? Or is it a longer written question and you need some kind of structure to it? You need some kind of paragraphs to it? Uh, or is this the type of question that's maybe three marks where this thing causes that, causes that, and it's best to answer in a certain sequence? Just doesn't need to be a long essay plan just to maybe jot down I'm going to do that then that the other or just think I'm going to do this then I'll do that then I'll do that that will mean your writing has better coherence and you don't kind of waffle on or answer something that's not actually being asked for in the question don't put down any um, any superfluous information information that's not needed then check you can actually well once you've written it write it then check it through and go back to that underlining you did have you actually done all of the things the examiner's asked you to do? Okay, that's written questions there. And there shouldn't be too many of them on a physics paper, luckily. Calculation questions next. Okay, now calculation questions are completely different. First of all, you need to really look for all the information. Identify the data that you've got, the numbers that you've been given. What are they? What do they represent? The thing that ends in the capital W is going to be power. The thing that ends in a capital N is going to be a force of some type or a weight. So do look for what the data is and identify what you're asked to calculate. And again, you can underline it or you can maybe draw a little diagram with labels on or I just often write, if I've got acceleration, I write A equals then the number, then the unit of acceleration meters per second squared. Okay, identify all the information and what you need to calculate. Then Check what units have got. Is there any conversion you need to do? do? We don't often use time in minutes in calculations. We're very, very rarely. I think that the only time would, might be half-life in um, an exam for physics. So that minutes needs to turn into hours or it needs to turn into seconds. So figure out what it needs to convert to. Centimeters normally gets converted into meters. Check the units, convert them if you need to. Okay, then select the equation. And you're lucky these days you always get formula sheets in exams. Select the equation from the formula sheet that's going to allow you to answer the, the question. There's always going to be an equation in that formula sheet which has two um, things you do know and one you don't, for example. Or maybe three things you do know and one you don't. But always only one thing that you have to calculate. And the rest will be given to you somewhere in that question. It might be way back in the start of the question, the stem of the question, but it will be somewhere in that question. Or it might be something you've had to work out in a previous question. It will be somewhere in that question that you've got, you've got that data there. If it's a um, higher level question, you might need to rearrange the formula. And even if it's a A-level question, you might need to derive a new formula from, let's say, two of those formula that you've got in the formula sheet. Okay, so select the equation, rearrange, and perhaps derive. Then input your data and show the data going into the equation on your sheet because there's sometimes marks for that. Input the data into the equation on the paper. Okay, I can't stress that enough. Show your, all of your working out and calculate. Use your calculator. Be careful with things like order of operations. Does this need to go in brackets? Do I need to do that before that? Okay. As soon as you've calculated, write down your answer. Do a bit of rounding. Don't leave it as an infinity of decimal places with your little um, dot for recurring. Don't leave it as the long number you get on thing. Just round to one or two decimal places or two or three significant figures is, is always going to be enough for a calculation. And lastly, put your unit on the end and check 
not just the answer. Is it a sensible order of magnitude? It's not millions and millions and millions of, um, of kilograms when you're talking about the, the mass of a, of a um, ball or something like that. Is it a sensible answer? And do the units make sense with the units that you've been given? So if you've been calculating with kilometers, is it kilometers per hour in your answer or have you just written meters per second because you know that's a unit of speed? Okay, I really hope that helped. It all takes practice. The more you practice and the more you do it in that step-by-step -step manner, the easier you're going to find both the written answers in physics and the calculation answers. Right. Best of luck with your exams. Thank you for watching Gorilla Physics. Please do like, share and subscribe. That really helps me be more useful to more people. Also, please go ahead and check out Gorilla Chemistry and get Gorilla Biology. You can expect the same sorts of things, past paper questions and videos to help you understand topics. Thanks once again for watching.